This is blue, and this, and this. At least when you're English, because for example, if you speak Russian, you divide the spectrum into lighter blues, color boy, and darker blues, sini. Our perception of color is not only related to how we see colors due to light, but also has a lot to do with the words we give them. The way you look at objects is influenced by one of mankind's greatest inventions. Language. In fact, language doesn't only influence your thoughts about elements, it even impacts the way you behave and the choices you make. So how does language influence our perception and behavior? Well, let's start with something easy, the gender of our words. Why is the vagina masculine? Pardon? Why is it le vagin and not la vagin? Oh, you mean le vagin? Oh, I don't know, it just is. Maybe it's because it's something a woman owns and a man possesses. Your language is seriously effed up. Strange, right? Vagina is a masculine word in French, even though only women physically have one. Researchers questioned if talking about inanimate objects as if they were masculine or feminine actually led people to think of inanimate objects as having a gender. They found out it does. It actually has consequences for how we think and feel towards objects. Take these keys, for example. How would you describe these? Native German speakers are likely to choose words like heavy, metal, hard, and useful in their own language. Spanish speakers, on the other hand, are more likely to describe it as intricate, little, shiny, and lovely. So you tell me, in which language is the word key feminine and which one masculine? See, you also make assumptions. So let's take a look at the vagina example again. French-speaking people would say le vagin, and the Spanish la vagina. This makes me wonder, how would French-speaking people describe a vagina? So language does make us look differently towards objects, but there's more. Like I already mentioned, it also has an effect on how we see colors. Language can have a, a significant effect on color because our recognition of color is partly determined by the language we use for them. A lot of cultures, in fact, didn't have a, a name for the color blue. Well, a good example of that would be the Himba people who live on the Namibian and Angolan border. Now, um, they only have um, four distinct names for colors, but lots and lots of shades of color. So when they're given a color spectrum, they find it harder than people say in the West to distinguish between the blue and the, and, and the green. And we find that quite easy because we have a name for the color blue. However, when it comes to distinctions between shades of green, they're much better than us. The consequences of, of not having a, a name for a different shade of a color as a separate color is that we're less likely to distinguish that. If, for example, we needed to identify the color of a car that bumped into us and drove away, we might not recall whether that car was a sort of darkish blue or a lightish blue. Perhaps um, someone from Russia might be more easily able to distinguish that because they do have separate names for the colors light blue and dark blue. But if our names have so much impact on our perception of color, what does this mean for numbers? Even though we might be using the same numeric system in a lot of different languages, the words we use for them actually influence how easily you can learn mathematics. Still following me? Take the number 94. If you're English, you're probably thinking 94. But the French, they say 94, which literally translate in 4, 20, 14. And the Dutch also do something weird. They turn most double digits around. So 94 is 94, literally 4 and 90. So the Dutch bring an extra dimension to doing math because you have to invert the numbers before you can do anything else. What works better? Well, in Mandarin Chinese and in New Welsh, they translate 94 literally in 9, 10, 4. Psychologists call this kind of system transparent because there's an obvious and consistent link between the numbers and the names. And this counts for all their larger numbers as well. 
Research should study this on Welsh-speaking kids because they have the same background, culture and school or curriculum as English-speaking kids. Six-year-olds had to position two-digit numbers on a blank number line. It was labeled zero at the one end and 100 at the other. And the Welsh-speaking children did a better job at the estimation task. Why? Because the Welsh language uses a transparent numeric system. That's why the kids seem to have a better ability to understand the numbers and to know where to place them on a scale. Having numbers also makes it possible to count another important thing. Money. Did you know that the language you speak can actually determine if you end up with this? Or this? Of course, there are tons of reasons why some people end up with a lightweight piggy bank, but economist Keith Chen found a link between language and the ability to save money. English, for example, is a future language. The grammar forces you to feel the future like something more distant than the present. And since saving involves current cost for a future reward, futured languages make saving more difficult. Futureless languages, on the other hand, make it easier to save money because you speak identically about the future and the present. And a good example is the Chinese language. Chen tested this by forming pairs between families that are nearly identical on every dimension you can measure. And then he explored whether or not there was a link between the language they spoke and their savings account. And surprise, surprise, it did. The futureless language families were likely to have a bigger savings account. Crazy, right? So if you have trouble filling your savings account, maybe you should consider learning Chinese. Sorry guys, it doesn't end here. Language also makes you assume things. Take a look at this picture. What do you see? How you describe this situation depends on the language you speak, because language makes you pay attention to certain things. For example, if you're English, you're probably gonna say something like, the person broke the face. But when you speak Spanish, you're more likely to say something like, the face broke. So what this shows us is that a simple picture can be described in different ways depending on the language you speak. And this has consequences because it guides our reasoning about events. Yeah. Yeah, because if you pursue this as an accident, that's what you're gonna remember. But if you pursue this as blame or somebody's fault, like she or he broke the vase, then that's what's gonna stick. I wonder what this means in court. The beautiful thing about linguistics is it shows us how inventive human beings are. With more than 7,000 languages around the world, we created thousands of cognitive universes. But this also means that language maybe has more impacts, big or small, that we don't even know about yet. And learning more about the influence language has on our mind and our behavior also helps us understand each other better. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. You. Yes. Not you, him. What's your name? Me. Yes, you! I am me. He's me. And I'm you. And because there are so many examples that we haven't looked into yet or maybe don't even know about, it doesn't stop after watching this video. It actually starts here. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked our video and tell us what you thought in the comments. The studies we use are in descriptions below. Educate yourself and subscribe to our channel if you never want to miss a video. And we hope to see you soon.